With the latest update to Pokemon Go, Niantic made some changes to the nearby Pokemon tracker. The heading now reads Sightings, and there's an image of tall grass behind each of the Pokemon on the list. I've gotten a ton of questions about what this means and how it works, so this video is going to explain it to you. The first thing I want to say is that the visual changes don't mean nearly as much as you think. The tall grass and the difference in the heading are used to differentiate this list from a list that Niantic is currently beta testing. Right now it's only available for players in San Francisco, but it shows Pokemon nearby that are located close to Pokestops. I'm going to explain that and all the other changes with this update in tomorrow's regularly scheduled video. But for today, I want to show you how to track Pokemon using the updated system. One change that was made to the nearby Pokemon list is that it doesn't show duplicate Pokemon anymore. So there could be more than one Rattata nearby, but the list will only show one. The most important change that was made is that Pokemon will now disappear from the list when you get too far away from them. The range is 200 meters, so if you're more than 200 meters away from a Pokemon, it will disappear from the list. Because of this one change, we can now effectively track down nearby Pokemon. Think of it like the footsteps, except instead of three footsteps showing you when you're getting closer to a Pokemon, you have one footstep showing you when you're within 200 meters or you're not. Now before it gets too dark, I'm going to show you how you can use the new tracker to effectively track down a Pokemon. We're going to look for the Paris on the list. So to start, what you want to do is start walking. Any direction, just walk straight. When the Pokemon disappears from the list, stop. Look at where you're standing and remember this as point A. Now, turn around and walk back in the opposite direction. The Pokemon will reappear on the list. Now keep walking until it disappears again. When the Pokemon disappears from the list again, stop. This is point B. Now, turn around, look back towards point A, and walk halfway between point A and point B. When you get to halfway between A and B, turn to your left or to your right, and walk straight. Now, you're either walking directly towards the Pokemon, or directly away from it. There it is, we found it. Got it, and we successfully tracked down a Pokemon. Now if you walk the other way and the Pokemon disappears from the list again, all you have to do is turn around 180 degrees and walk the opposite direction, and you'll be walking directly towards it. This method of tracking is based on a post by Redditor the Colorless Pill. To explain how it works, I'm gonna show you a diagram from a top-down point of view. This circle represents the 200 meter range in which you can see the Pokemon. As long as you're standing within this circle, it'll show up on your nearby Pokemon list. Once you see the Pokemon on the list, start walking in a direction. When you hit the edge of the circle, the Pokemon will disappear from the list. That's point A. Now, turn around and walk directly back until the Pokemon disappears again. That's point B. Now when you walk back to the center, you can turn 90 degrees to your left or to your right. If you turn the wrong way, you'll walk to the edge of the circle again and the Pokemon will disappear. Now, just turn around and walk the opposite way and you're walking straight back towards the Pokemon. Once you get close enough, it'll show up on the map. It gets a little more complicated in cities when you have buildings around, but now that you understand how it works, you can kind of figure out how to work around them to still track the Pokemon you're looking for. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. And make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's episode when I cover all the changes that came with this update. See you guys then.